Okay guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing DaVinci Resolve and the the live camera feature in the color tab. If you own Blackmagic 4K Mini in your computer and you have a camcorder that you're hooked up to, you can use SDI or HDMI to SDI and run the SDI into the 4K Blackmagic Mini card and run it from your Atmos recorder to your monitor run a splitter from your camera and then go over to your home computer and monitor the actual input in DaVinci Resolve. Now I'm running DaVinci Resolve Studio and I'm going to show you guys how to do this uh, properly. The signal coming out of your camera must match the signal going into the card and I'll explain that in a second and the power the power behind do, having this option is you can use the scopes in DaVinci Resolve to get perfect color perfect white balance and make sure all your levels are correct in your green screen before you start recording so you can actually see your color chart your white balance and a whole bunch of other stuff in real time and then uh, do your recording and then put your recorded footage into DaVinci to do color grading and whatever you gotta do so this feature allows you like I said to monitor what it's gonna look like uh, prior green, green screen removal so if you guys are interested, stay tuned, watch the footage. I'm going to show you a, some footage of inside, the, uh, inside my studio and the hookups. And we'll go with that right now. Okay guys, I'm just going to take you through my studio. This is my $100 green screen, my homemade bank lights, my Zoom H5 recorder. And how I got this connected is I have HDMI out to the end of the Atomos Ninja 2 and the monitor or out runs to my 4K splitter which has one in and four out. And I run the uh, HDMI up to the monitor to show what's in my camera with false color and all the other things. And then I run another line down all the way to the ground and it's connected to another Blackmagic product an S HDMI to SDI converter and then I have a screw on SDI to regular coax goes into the wall and this runs underneath my house over to my studio inside the living room you'll see it coming out of the wall is the same jack coax and then I have a little adapter that goes to SDI plugs into my 4k Blackmagic mini card and it goes into my media PC, which is my home theater, everything else. And I use my screen to edit in DaVinci. Okay, we're going to verify the signal. You you may have a you may have a camera that uh, puts out 4K or different resolutions. Mine, I know, puts out 1080p or interlace 1080i at and I believe it's 59.94 that's actually 29.96976 at uh, 1080p progressive anybody who owns an Atomos recorder and understands that it has to up convert especially with the Ninja 2 and that's why it's set to I but it's actually putting out a progressive signal of 23.976 and you're gonna see how sensitive this is if I switch it to 60 it's gonna not detect it the signal coming in has to be perfectly matched and like I said this supports a 10-bit output as well as an 8-bit 8-bit sorry and uh, you want to verify the signal with this program first before you go into DaVinci Resolve and use the live feature So that's pretty much it for that. You're not going to want to use this recorder. Now I have uh, these files can be found in a video on my website. How to turn a computer into an Atomos recorder. You can watch that and learn how to set this up. So I just shown this quick to show you that you have an option to record on other software. In ProRes 422. 
and uh, this is how I have mine set up. And this is just another tool to verify that you have a signal coming in. Same idea, 1080i, 59.94, 10-bit, 422, YUV. If you have that set, you'll see an image. If you change it, you'll have nothing. It's like this through any software you have in your computer. So this is good for recording movies and other things too. So, but anyway, we're not going to get into this. We have a video on this. Going to load my DaVinci Resolve Studio. I believe this works in the free version as well. There's a couple steps you want to do. When you first start your project, you want to select the frame rate, resolution, before you drop a video onto your timeline. Now, the more important is this part, the monitor. This must match the signal coming into your computer from your card. And that's where we got that information from the Blackmagic Media Express. And you're going to want to enable in preferences this option so that way you're using your 4k deck link mini card okay so I found that if you don't have a video on the timeline the the live feature won't work right with the nodes so now that the video is on that we're going to show you guys how I use this for uh, my green screen studio. Once you enable it, this is a live feed coming from my studio room, and that's my color passport. Now I've set my white balance and uh, exposure based on false color, but we're going to show you uh, how to double check these things. So I've set it in camera. All my lights are at 5,000 Kelvin. And the green screen is a different lighting because it's bank lighting. So we're going to put our false color LUT and turn it on and off with that option there. And you're going to see the pattern. See how it's green behind the card? You want an even lighting to where your subject is so that way you can pull a good key. And this is how I get my keys and my, my infusion with Delta Cure. What we're going to do is we're going to show you the white balance check because the white balance is based on the subject not on the background and you're going to see here that you see all those little spikes they're all matched perfectly up the center that's perfectly white balanced now that was done in camera and now it's verified on the software program in DaVinci Resolve using the the live feature same as this I'm going to check my my black to white and these are just quick little tests you can run as a starting point for color grading and we're going to check out our uh, chart here and looking at the scope here we're going to be uh, wanting to get the blacks and the whites on the zero on the high line and we're just going to use the color wheels to use the lift and bring it down to black and the gang to bring it up to white so there you go that's perfect uh, black to white balance or exposure like the full range and you can switch be between the two by seeing the difference and then the color below that line is to set the color of the camera so like every camera has a different color science so to do that we're going to select this option in hue vs hue select each of the color dots and then we're going to use the hue rotate to move the uh, colors into the appropriate boxes and you can see that by using the vector scope. And you can set these settings that I got on here. And then you're going to look at these little boxes. And you're going to adjust these uh, colors so that the arms or the points match each box. And 
You're also going to do this if you want to uh, match multiple cameras with one scene. Now I only run one camera in my studio, but you can uh, use this technique as well, indoor, outdoor, wherever you're filming. So you'll see that after I adjust these levels, this automatically will fix the skin tones and everything. We'll, we'll show that later in this video. But remember, we're doing this on the live feed. So th this is what's different about doing this after the fact. So the person who's recording can see what they want and how it's going to look before they actually hit the record button on their, on their camera. Okay, that looks really good. That looks good. Okay, we're gonna set up. Uh, we're gonna check our skin tones now, according to this chart. This is the X-Rite Color Passport. There's a video one. I I wouldn't use it because it's got glossy black on it, but so I use this one. So we're going to take a look at our skin tones on the vector scope. You're going to want to enable uh, the skin tone line. Just a check mark right here. Make it bigger. We're going to zoom in the screen so we can see a little bit more of the uh, vector scope. And you can see on the line, see the little two dots? That's perfect skin tone according to the color chart. So this is only a starting point. Okay, so this is without any color correction. This is raw from the camera, the live feed. And this is going to be the adjusted colors with the color x right Passport, or color checker as it's called. And like I said, this is just a starting point. And the clip after this, this whole video was done using these, these uh, procedures. So as you can see, it's it's easy to do. You just have to know how to do it. There's not a lot of tutorials on how to uh, do this in DaVinci Resolve with the 4K Blackmagic products. So anybody who's got these products can uh, follow these steps. There's other programs you can use. Like I said, you can use the uh, Media Express for Blackmagic. The problem with Media Express is your capture is going to be like too many gigs per second raw. If you go to use all up, you can get your, uh, you can get it down to 220 megabytes a second in uh, ProRes uh, 422 10-bit. My Atomos recorder puts out 10-bit, and I can choose 10 and 8-bit at the computer. If I have a 4K camera, I could actually choose 4K on the Blackmagic at 23.976 frames per second or 29.97. So because my camera is running into the splitter, the splitter is scaling the signal to 1080 59.98i because my camera's putting out 29.976. So it's upscaling it interlace, but it's not. It's actually in uh, progressive frames 29.976. So it seems confusing when you guys are trying to figure out what to put into the DaVinci Resolve settings. And that's why I took you through the computer to explain this simpler for you guys. It, your signal has to match the output signal of going into the SDI cable out to the card. You cannot choose any custom resolution. Blackmagic products are designed for one purpose only, to take a signal and match it at its source. So you cannot convert the signal. So if you're trying to convert with a camera in one room and a card in the other, it isn't going to work. You have to make sure the signals match. So that's the biggest downfall. 
Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, thumbs up, and look for more videos to come. Have a good day.